Hi everyone, I'm Whitney and I post sewing, crafting, and cosplaying videos here on my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Mayte baby carrier. I have made two of them so far and my daughter Peyton really enjoys being worn in them and she actually enjoys them a lot more than the Moby that we used to use. So I thought I would share how we make our wraps with you all today. So for a quick disclaimer, as with all baby items, please use discretion. Um, you know your baby, you know if things are right or if something seems off. Uh, make sure to look up proper baby wearing techniques. I am not an expert so I am not going to um, give you all the details and advice for proper baby wearing so make sure to look that up before you start baby wearing and um, my daughter is almost nine months old she is about 14 and a half pounds obviously has very good head and neck control so this wrap works really well for her but if you have a much larger or much smaller baby you definitely want to look up info and make sure that this kind of wrap will work for you and your baby in your situation before you make it and put it into use. Just use caution and um, yeah, just make sure you're doing everything in a safe way before you put your baby in any sort of wrap. So that being said, let's get into the tutorial and the first thing you'll need to do is create the pattern for the body piece and I have all the measurements marked out on the pattern shown here but I will give you a few of the important ones and that is um, it needs to measure 19 inches at the tallest point, 16 and a half inches at the bottom width, 13 and 3 quarters inches at the skinniest portion and the angled corners at the top are 5 inches each and of course all the rest of the measurements are shown on the picture so feel free to pause the video, write those down um, and then make your pattern accordingly. You will need two thirds of a yard for each of your body pieces. You will need one for the front and one for the back because this wrap is completely reversible. You also need three and a half yards of fabric for the straps and then interfacing for each of your body pieces. And I am just using plain cotton, like a quilting cotton that you can get at any fabric store. It is lightweight enough to be comfortable, but when it has the um, medium weight fusible interfacing on it, it is sturdy enough that everything feels safe and secure. Cut one body piece from each of your two fabrics and two from your interfacing. For the straps, cut two measuring 22 by 80 inches long. Then from your remaining fabric, cut two that measure 11 inches by 32 inches. Find the textured side of your fusible interfacing and place it face down on the wrong side of the body piece. Iron to fuse into place. Repeat with the other body piece. Let's go ahead and make the straps. You want to fold one strap piece in half, right sides together, and sew one short side and the entire long side. Turn the strap right sides out and iron, then top stitch all around the four sides. Repeat with the other three straps. If you want to make yours Totoro inspired like mine, then watch my Totoro Kigurumi tutorial that is linked below and make the crescents the exact same way. I added one more layer to my body piece because I realized the white was a little bit see-through and so I just cut out another body piece from the same white fabric and sewed the two together along the edge. To assemble, get one of the shorter straps and pleat it on the end that isn't 100% finished. Make sure to leave half an inch at the bottom of the body piece for seam allowance. Repeat with the other waist strap. Then do the same at the shoulders with the longer straps, leaving a half inch for seam allowances so the strap only gets sewn in at the end. Fold the straps up and place them in the middle of the body piece. Then put the other body piece on top right sides together. You can see the strap ends are sticking out and that's to make sure they are sewn in very securely and then they'll get top stitched for extra strength. Once everything is pinned, sew around the outer edge leaving a 5 to 6 inch gap along the top to turn everything through. It should look like this and we're almost done.
carefully snip the seam allowances on the two curved areas, then reach in through the opening and pull everything right sides out. Iron it all flat and top stitch around the entire body piece twice to finish it off and to secure the shoulder straps again. So here is the completed carrier. Like I said before, I am not an expert, so please do your own research on proper baby wearing before you start. Peyton and I both love baby wearing. We go shopping like this and when we go to the gym I walk a couple of miles while wearing Peyton. She loves it because it's like a built-in hug. So there you have it. That is how I've made both of my Mayte baby carriers and they are actually pretty simple to make and very comfortable to wear. And if you have any questions on the process for making it, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will answer them the best that I can. Um, this is one of those videos you probably need to watch it a couple times before um, attempting to make it just to make sure you understand every step of the process. If you want to see my other Totoro inspired projects, definitely check out my playlist link because I have done uh, several different projects inspired by the film Totoro and I really like how all of them turned out. So definitely check those out and don't forget to subscribe so all my future videos end up in your subscription box so you don't miss out on any of them. And I will be back soon with more videos. Bye!